valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well and welcome back to our next sea power battle. Now you guys have requested that I do more scenarios using the excellent NTU or new threat upgrade mod. In case you don't know and I'm sure you do, the mod upgrades American 1970s and early 1980s ships and submarines to their later late 80s and 1990s configurations, i.e. making them much more powerful with more modern weapons. I tried first using it in a big scenario that we did, and although not unrealistic, I didn't actually like it. What I found is that it made the Americans too good for the Soviets in-game. It sort of ruined the game balance, and to be honest, I just wanted to go back to how it was, where everything was balanced and you had to work hard for a fight. So I don't particularly want to start using it in that type of battle because I just don't want to win every time basically. But I have thought of some other stuff that we can do. Today I would like to investigate the upgrades to the Spruance and Ticonderoga vessels in the mid 1980s or 1986 I think it began. Both classes began to be equipped with the Mark 41 VLS vertical launch system which of course proved to be a massive game changer for surface vessels and is still used today. So pre-1986 the Spruance relied on her dedicated Sea Sparrow launcher here to fire her surface to air missiles as well as that dedicated harpoon launchers to fire her harpoons. After 1986, some of her ASW equipment was sacrificed for the fitting of the Mark 41 VLS, which increased the number of missiles she could carry, the number of types of missiles that she could carry, and the rate that she could fire them at. As for the Tyco, all hulls built before 1986 did not have Mark 41. Instead, they relied on two twin-armed Mark 26 launchers here, and here to fire her RIM-66 SM-2s. The Mark 26 arm launcher was inferior to the Mark 41 in terms of their rate of fire as well as overall quantity of missiles and also the amount of crew it took to service these. They were replaced with the Mark 41 VLS which of course increased the number of missiles and the rate that she could fire them at. So as a logistics comparison, pre-1986 the Tyco carried RIM-66C SM-2 missiles, 68 of them via her Mark 26 and 8 RGM-84 early spec harpoons. We'll just concentrate on the weapons that are really going to be relevant for today. The Spruance pre-1986 would have had her 24 RIM-7M Sea Sparrows from her dedicated launcher and again 8 early RGM-84 Harpoons. Post-1986 VLS equipped Tyco would have moved from RIM-66C to 66H, or just a more modern SM-2. Instead of 68, she now had 90. As well as that, and I didn't know this, um, she also had Harpoons, which of course were Mark 41 compatible. Land attack and sea attack, and today we're interested in the RGM-109B, of which she carries in this configuration 12. As well as that, she retains her harpoons, but upgraded to the D model, and I think they're still fired from the stern launchers. Post-1986 Spruance with VLS, she retained her dedicated Sea Sparrow launchers and eight harpoons upgraded to Ds, and I think they're still fired from the dedicated launchers. But with her VLS, she now had the ability to also fire Tomahawk missiles, so land attack and sea attack again. Sea attack is what we're interested in, and in this fit, up to 24 anti-ship. So, as we can see, a huge increase in the weapons that they could carry and the rate that they're going to be able to fire them at. And the NTU mod is full of this kind of thing. I think these are the only two vessels with added VLS, but almost all of them have had upgraded weapons to the more modern harpoon, tomahawk and whatnot, so it's well worth checking out. Um, the battle will just be our usual battle. Today is not a tactical battle, it's just a firepower test. That's all we want to show. It's super simple. We've got, on the red side here, a pre-1986 Spruance and Tyco, 50 miles away, a post-1986 Spruance and Tyco with VLS. They can see each other, we just press go and they start firing at each other. At this time I like to make a pseudo-intelligent prediction, but it's kind of obvious, right? you got pre-1986 and post-1986 with VLS. Obviously VLS is going to win. It was a massive game changer for the US ships. But let's see it in action and see how much difference it actually makes. And I haven't actually run this yet, so I'm going to be in the dark as to what actually happens here. All right, both sides can see each other. Three, two, one, go. Let's see what happens. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So 
actually the first time I've seen this, viewers. I didn't realise they could fire that rapid fire. I'm presuming the Reds have responded. They probably have. It's kind of a look. Yes, the Reds have responded as well. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, not sure what to say about that. Oh, they're still firing. They're still firing. Well, there's VLS for you, I guess, viewers. The modelling is not perfect, but you can see roughly where the VLSs are, so it's, I think it's good enough for what we're going to do. So, a grand total of, I can't actually remember. I wish there was a missile counter like we have in DCS. Probably about uh, 50, I'm going to have a guess, 50 Tomahawks and Harpoons versus eight, no, versus 16 harpoons from these guys. Hmm. Yeah. At some point, these missiles should cross the red harpoons. Interestingly, the harpoons do this kind of wiggly maneuver. I don't know if it's a search maneuver or if it's uh, an evasive maneuver, so let me know, please. Annoyingly, I can't see the red missiles. As far as I'm aware, I've got no way of seeing the red missiles. I stand to be corrected. So, uh, Tyco has two VLSs, one there and one there, each to replace the uh, Mark 26. And Spruance uh, has a single at the front. Oh, hello. Not seen yet. Oh, yes, they have seen it. Missiles out. And defensive. And naval gunnery. Check the blues. Strange that the reds missiles haven't got there yet. Well, there's not really much stopping that, to be honest. Pretty going to check on the blues. Oh yes, the blues are firing. So as well as that anti-shipping, they are also going to have higher rate of fire of SM, I mean look at that, look at the SM2, this guy's not even fire, oh this guy doesn't have SM2s does he? Zero, zero, but look at that. Vampire, 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 I wonder why this guy's gone broadside. Pause, let's just, we've got, we've got two battles going on at once here viewers, let's just see. So, of the 16 RGM 84s fired, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I think, are remaining. Let's see what's going on with these guys here. But these have like 30 still remaining. Right, sorry, the blue side. Just smashing out his rims. Look at that. Oh, there's only uh, four left. No, only three missiles left. No, four. Sorry, so much happening at once. Of the 16 red harpoons fired, only two are remaining. So they're almost certainly going to win. What amazing. That, that was an amazing effort. Oh, dear. And that is the red spruance that's already destroyed and overwhelmed. Good effort. Tycho's not going down. Wow. <laughs> How about that? The Tycho survived. Right, pause. Sorry, I'm aware it's difficult to watch when I have to keep jumping about viewers, but that's just it. So, the Tycho with the VLS, along with the uh, Sea Sparrow on the Spruance, destroyed all 16 harpoons fired at them, and they never really stood a chance of getting through mainly due to the SM2 on the VLS of the Tyco. Now here's an amazing thing, maybe we have to rerun it, but for some reason, all 40 or whatever missiles fired at these guys, oh no, it's been hit, it's been hit. I take that back, it was hit, but amazingly, it survived. Now, is it going to be able to repair itself is the question. So, as I said at the beginning, it was never in doubt who was going to win. Obviously, much better firepower. But it's interesting seeing it in action. Let's just scroll forward to see whether she sinks. Birds away, Drake. Drake. Ah, 
Oh, that's too far. Oh, there's a helicopter. That's funny. No, they definitely fired all of their anti-ship missiles. Well, she survived, to be fair. She just had 30-plus missiles fired at her. Shut up! God, her voice drives me absolutely insane, viewers. We'll wait. We'll wait. I'm aware you can turn it off, but you miss important things when you turn it off, so it's a bit of a good, difficult decision. So, amazingly, a Tygo completely smashed all hell, but they managed to put the fire out, and she's not going to sink. So it's amazing. Just a few years' technology makes completely asymmetric warfare. One side, and they're the same ships, basically, same tonnage, same crew, almost. Just a few years separating them, and one side is smashed, and the other doesn't even get a scratch. Again, this mod is super cool, but like I said, I don't really want to use it because it makes the game too easy to play if you're Americans or too hard to play if you're the Soviets. It, well, just to be honest, it gets really boring, I find. But cool for little experiments like this. Uh, I guess let me know if you want me to do anything else with it. Um, I will see you later.